Now in our sixth year, Five this is GabNet, the Great this American Broadcast Gabnet, Network. American Talk Broadcast like Broadcast you've never Network. heard it before. Talk like you've never heard it before. A minute. What was that? That wasn't supposed to happen. Bombadoo. Hey everybody, it's the Bramble. I'm Alex Bennett. We're coming to you from New York City. See that below us? It's New York City. And uh, we're going until midnight uh, tonight. What What the hell happened there? What? I, I played, that was, I have a new... See, we've just, we're, we're, as of the 4th, we will be six years doing GabNet. And I have a new GabNet thing, right, to run. But I don't have it there. What, what the hell happened? Uh, I, you know, I, I didn't, uh, I don't have it uh, uh, there. Let me see here. No, that's Imager Golding. I, I should have been playing that too. What, what happened? I have no idea. Anyway, uh, wait a minute. Let me just see the beginning of this again here. Hold on. Five years and still talking. Yeah, that's this fine. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And how come that other one went? That's really strange. Oh, I see. It's over here. See, this is the way it's going to sound pretty soon. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American... Now in our sixth okay, year, all right, this... all right, you get the idea. Anyway, I don't know how that went. That's all, all technical wizardry to me. I have no idea how it works. <laughs> anyway, um, let me see here. Where am I? Okay, so uh, listen, I have to apologize for this. Wait a minute, this eye, this eye here. Wait a minute, is this the one that's hurting? Which one is hurting? Huh. They're both hurting. They, they, I have had, all of a sudden, my breathing thing that I had for a couple of weeks, gone. It's fine. But my eyes today have been burning and tearing all day long. And look at this, look how red they are. See? And then I'd wear the glasses, only I'm so bleary-eyed. Uh, let me clear my eyes out here. I'm so bleary-eyed that I can't really see the screen that well. So um, uh, I, I excuse the the eyes, okay? I'm sorry, they're a little screwed up here, but you can see, see it's redder. I can see you uh, looking at the uh, screen there. And I tried putting some concealer on there. I went in, into the cabinet where my wife keeps all her makeup and started putting some stuff on there, but it didn't seem to make it any better. Maybe when I, I have something I'm going to play here in a moment. Maybe I'll run in there and put on some more of that concealer and see if it helps. But anyway, oh man, so I, I don't know what, I, my nose is sniffling, and it's, there's something, pollen is not the problem, because pollen count is down. There is something in this apartment that is causing this, and I think to the, over the weekend, I'm going to try and get out of here as much as possible, although I'm afraid to, because our COVID rate in, uh, in New York State has gone up. Okay, it hasn't gone up tremendously. Uh, we were about we were in the 800s, like 850, and now we're like at 910 cases yesterday, which means it's on the rise, but small. Um, uh, certainly, well within uh, what are some of our better numbers. Okay, but what worries our governor is this could be the start of a trend. And he's worried that New Yorkers have gotten a little complacent about all of this. You know, it was easy for us to keep people indoors and, not, and socially distancing when the weather was bad. People just stayed inside and watched the rain outside, watched cold weather, said, okay, I can, I can do this. But the minute that sun started to shine, I knew we were in for trouble. And what we've got, it's the kids, okay, uh, among others, that just feel there they can't well if i get it it's just not going to kill me yeah but it's going to kill me if you spread it to me 
And, you know, I, uh, I, I don't find that a really fun possibility. So uh, even though I would like to go outside where I think maybe this eye thing will get better and I will br breathe better and all of that, uh, because there's something in this apartment. I mean, I've been in here for five months now, practically. Uh, that is just horrible. And, and uh, I, I can't get rid of it. Uh, and I've got, now Marjorie doesn't, her eyes don't hurt as much, but she goes out for a walk every day with her girlfriend, but I'm, I'm never invited, so I just don't leave, okay? Uh, but tomorrow I'm getting out, I'm just getting out of here, even though I'm afraid to because of, of what, the, what the governor says, that things aren't as good as they should be, all right? So anyway, uh, I'm, so I'm, excuse me if I'm blowing my nose, the nose is dripping and the eyes are tearing and this one looks redder. This one looks, this is the red one. Is this the red one? No, this is the red one. Huh, it doesn't look as red as, this is the one that hurts. Okay, well, anyway, I don't want to labor you with that. Once we get the citizen panel going, we'll be okay. By the way, if you call us on Zoom, you can go over to gabnet.net and there's a place you can just click on right there it'll take you right to the show you don't even have to have zoom installed zoom does the whole thing for you online all right if you want zoom you can go to zoom.com and download the program i'm sure they would appreciate that uh so uh anyway um that's that's part of you know what you can do and then you can also go over to uh, fa my facebook page facebook uh, dot com forward slash a Bennett and at that you will be able to uh, the, there's another place where you can click to get on it or if you're watching us on YouTube guess what that's correct folks on YouTube we are um, uh, we right at the very bottom of the uh, of, of like the where the the picture is and everything there's a link there that you can use zoom as well there are a few problems with zoom however uh, and um, uh, I don't get this. Uh, 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 I, uh, I, uh, there is something terrible happening on YouTube, by the way. I had 1,080 people subscribing to me just two days ago. And now it's down, it was down yesterday to 1,029, and then today it's at 1,016. Now, it seems to me that something is happening. I mean, I wrote them and told them what's happening, that something is happening over at YouTube. And, of course, if I go below 1,000, I lose my monetization, which I haven't made any money off of it anyway. But it pisses me off that all these people have subscribed to me. And, uh, I'll, in fact, I'll, I'll show you here. Look, look at this. Uh, you can see it. Um, hmm. Here. See right up there? See, 1,016. So would all of you who are out there watching me right now, if you can, I would appreciate it, if you would go over there and you would uh, subscribe to me, go to, go to my channel on YouTube, and um, uh, let's see here. Where, where do we get the channel here? So here's the channel. Wait a minute. The channel should come up. There's the channel. And by the way, by the way, this is interesting, okay? You go to the channel and just subscribe to me on that page. You go to, um, you, know, you just go to, Alex, just go, Alex Bennett will take you to this page. But look at that. What did it say I had as subscribers, okay? 1,016, all right? Look at this here. 1,000, 1 1.08 subscribers that's 1080 subscribers all right that's the the number that should be and that's the number that comes up if you go right to alex bennett it's been that way for the last couple of days so i don't know what the problem is with youtube but you know ever since the coronavirus nothing uh, uh works pretty uh, very well <laughs> okay so anyway, uh, because people work from home and they're, they're screwing up like crazy, and uh, but anyway, uh, just go to uh, uh, just go to um, um, Al Alex Bennett, go to and then subscribe to me right now, right now, 
because I want to see what, uh, what uh, comes up, okay? Uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of that. Let me get back to here. Let me see. Did anybody, anybody try to sign on while I've been talking? Uh, no, nobody's tried to sign on while I've been talking. Okay, well, anyway, that's, that's what that is. Okay, there we go. Okay. So listen, uh, so, uh, uh, and also if you call right now, you will get, uh, uh, you will be put in the waiting room uh, for the show because I'm, I'm using a waiting room a lot lately because we've been, we got Zoom bombed last night again. So I want to keep the Zoom bombers away. All right. So anyway, where, where are we? Let me see here. Let me go back and look at, the, here, there we go. All right. I got so I just want to show you. I saw, found this. I ran into this the other day, and I just wanted to play it because I found it absolutely fascinating and interesting. Uh, you, you, the Situation Room, not Wolf Blitzer's Situation Room, but the one in the White House. Have you ever wondered what the Situation Room is like? I mean, I imagine this inner sanctum in this room where everybody's sitting around speaking in hushed tones and everything. Well, I went online, and on YouTube, the White House, under Obama, did this presentation taking people into the, uh, into the Situation Room. And I thought I'd play that for you, because it is absolutely fascinating. It's only five minutes long, but I think you will find it edifying, okay? Watch this. Introducing the Prime Minister. We're here in the West Wing of the White House, inside the White House Situation Room. We host about 25 conferences a day here in the Situation Room, and some 250 guests attending the different meetings throughout the day. In a month, that's over 5,000 visitors and attendees to the different meetings that we have here. It's a state-of-the-art facility, the ability to conduct video teleconferences with 17 or 1,800 entities throughout the world. This is an interagency meeting on H1N1 pandemic, and so it has interagency representatives from the executive branch, uh, departments and agencies. They have the technology here and the capability to bring in other departments and agencies electronically as opposed to having folks face-to-face. -face. The White House Situation Room was created in May of 1961 by the then National Security Advisor, McGeorge Bundy. Uh, they had a voracious appetite for information, particularly President Kennedy. In response to that need, they felt the desire to create a communications center here within the White House. In 2007, the White House Situation Room underwent a major renovation, which greatly expanded the square footage and the capabilities of the White House Situation Room. We went from one principal conference room to three principal conference rooms. This is the large conference room where the president holds the National Security Council meetings. Well, this is the president's chair. He controls the video options, including the microphones. Now, the traditional lineup of seats is based on the seniority of the different cabinet members attending the meeting. Tied to the executive conference room, is a small breakout room designed to enable the president to take one or two people into a conference room to have a small one-on-one -on -one session with them. And all of the feel that you see here, the types of wood, are designed to replicate the other entities at which the president would participate, places like Air Force One and Camp David, so that wherever the president is, the feel is the same, having the same texture and sound around him. One of the cool features of this particular room in the White House Situation Room is the opportunity to provide privacy for the president if he's making a head of state phone call from the Situation Room itself. And what we'll do is we'll be able to fog the windows to give him that level of privacy. So throughout the White House Situation Room, you have a number of phone tubes, or we call them Superman tubes, uh, with the capability to have unclassified telephones as well as top secret telephone capability. This is the watch floor of the White House Situation Room, and the watch floor's commodity is situational awareness. 
We're a fusion center, meaning that we fuse approximately 2,000 pieces of information every day. We produce three daily reports directly for the president. And it's basically a situational awareness update, perhaps since the last time the president had an opportunity to assimilate any additional information. The room that you see behind me is called the surge room, and that's where we literally surge personnel in a crisis. We keep the phones and the computers always on uh, so that we can provide instant access and start fusing information to provide a summary for the decision makers in the White House so that they can make the decisions in response to that situation or crisis, and hence the clever name, Situation Room. One third of the personnel come from the intelligence community, one third come from the Department of Homeland Security, and the remainder come from the U.S. military. We are sent here because we're apolitical. We're not Democrats, we're not Republicans. We're here to support our nation and the President of the United States and the institution of the presidency. And all of the people who work in the White House Situation Room are simply the best and the brightest that this nation can offer, and they do the very best job that they can do. Isn't that fascinating? Huh? Hmm? Isn't that fascinating? Wow, that's amazing. I, I enjoyed that, and if you want to, it's it's on YouTube. Uh, it's got, uh, let's see here, uh, uh, I don't know how many uh, millions of views over the years. Uh, no doubt uh, they didn't take them away, but I don't, I don't understand why, where my people went. I have no idea. And while we've been talking, has anybody, oh, I got two people, two people signed in, okay? I need more. I need all of you to go to, just uh, go to YouTube.com and then put in Alex Bennett or put in, yeah, put in Alex Bennett and it'll take you to uh, my page, okay, my channel. And then, if, and then you go there and subscribe, okay, subscribe. I won't send you anything. No, uh, no uh, 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 solicitors will call. I just want to see this number if it goes up because people have started uh, uh, going in there and, and adding to the number. But anyway, it just pisses me off. This really just pisses me off altogether. Anyway, let me, uh, let me admit a couple of people here who are waiting now to be on Zoom. And uh, let me see here. Let me uh, go there. And uh, I, I even have a button now here. So I can, there we go. There they are. There's Howard and there's Phil. Hello, Howard. Hello, Phil. Hey, hey Phil. You got uh, Corona hair. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little wind blowing. Well, he'll need he, a haircut. Yeah, probably. Uh, but but you you know, you can still go to a barber there, can't you? Uh, I go to a beauty parlor, um, and the woman has opened up again. But you know, it's like cumbersome. I gotta like prove uh, I haven't been sick. I gotta like let her test my temperature, all this stuff. I was thinking of calling her and see if she'd just come to my house. Yeah, yeah. So how'd you guys enjoy being left in the waiting room? Hey, I get left in a lot of places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, it, is there any kind of artwork there? Where? In the waiting room? No, it just says, no. you're waiting for Alex. Oh, really? Because I put a thing in on my uh, my tools for, for Zoom where it says that while they're waiting there, I c it could have a Gabnet logo or something. But I guess I guess it didn't, didn't do it. Notice. I didn't notice that. Anyway, did you, did you hear what I said happened with YouTube? I'm so pissed off about this. I worked so hard, number one, to get to a thousand so I could be monetized, and then over the over the last couple of months, uh, maybe half a year, people have just dribs and drabs joined and subscribed because they like the show, and they've gotten unsubscribed because I, as of the other day, I had oh 1,080 people, and now it's down to 1,018 in like a matter of two days. Mm. So there's something yeah. wrong over at YouTube, you know. Uh, you ever heard of Fiverr? Huh? Have you ever heard of Fiverr? F I V E R. What's Fiverr? Yeah, it's it's a uh, matter of fact. Rob used them. I did. I used them to build the logo for my radio station. 
Yeah. Yeah, but what... I bet if you went on Fiverr, you can get some people to subscribe for five bucks, like a hundred subscribers. Well, I, but, but, I, bucks. I, you know, I, I no, got all those I got bucks. I got all those people legitimately. OK, you know, I got them legitimately. No fun. And all of a sudden, boom, it's down to this. And then when you go, if you if you go to my page, Alex Bennett, the channel, uh, uh, YouTube dot com and then uh, then search for Alex Bennett, you will see it says I have one thousand eighty subscribers. So it it, 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 I don't understand it. Makes no sense to me, you know. And so uh, everybody, go over there if you if if you have subscribed in the past, make sure you're subscribed. And if you haven't uh, gone there uh, in the past, uh, uh, now I have one thousand nineteen. So three people while I've been talking have joined. Okay. Charlie's waiting. Charlie's waiting. Huh? Oh, uh, let me see here. Well, a lot of people are. Oh, Charlie is waiting. Okay, here we go. Let me admit him. I'm just trying to tonight keep uh, uh, the uh, Zoom bombers from attacking me again. Yes. Somebody uh, else. Somebody else you know is on the the chat, the live chat, the YouTube chat. The, yeah. What's this? Yeah. Okay. Who is? Who's on the web, YouTube chat? Well, who? Marjorie Miller. Oh, she says for sure, but getting my allergies is another. Uh, getting to my <laughs> allergist is another story. What? Oh, I see. Mold and dust are definitely some of the causes. I don't know, man, but today my eyes are just trashed. But my breathing's fine. My breathing has recovered completely. So I'm left with this. With these. These. Do they look red? I guess not. A little bit. A little bit. What about your your light your your lightheadedness? Oh, that I don't have that today. I don't have that today. I just have the eyes. You know, you look like you've been crying. You, huh? you look a little like you've been crying. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you tearing? Is the uh, tear uh, tear ducts backing up still? No, like, no, I don't have tear ducts backing up. Well, I thought you had an issue where you were going to have them. No, uh, no, no, no. What I have are these. My eyes are drooping here, so they cause a little well in here, and mm -hmm. then bacteria can go in there and get caught in there, and my eyes get infected, and I need to have my eyes done. It's a medical procedure, so I, you mm -hmm. know, the, 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 the what do you call it? Uh, my medical uh, insurance takes care of it. But so they're not doing it because of COVID uh, and no uh, uh, procedures. No, I'm not doing it right now because of, uh, you know, to get to my uh, eye doctor to do it. Oh, gee, you just lost part of the beach there. Uh, <laughs> the wind. <laughs> the wind. Uh, uh, to yeah. do it, to do it, uh, I have to go to a doctor. And before I go to the doctor, I have to go to Mount Sinai and get like an eye test or something mm -hmm. so that he can then do this procedure. Uh, just renew your driver's license. They'll give you an eye test. I, I have a new driver's license, yeah. but anyway, well, the point is, it's it's, it's some kind of test for pressure on the. I don't know what it is, but anyway, I got to do it before he does this, so I can't get to him, and I don't want to go to Mount Sinai, you know that petri dish up the hill, and uh, I, you know I don't know if I if I want to uh, risk it yet, you know. So I'm stuck, but but this is something else. This is not that, okay? No, it's not causing the redness. No. No, here comes Jeff Stein. Let me admit him. I, Did you I see Rob's background. That was his Fiverr background. It, it, uh, it, it's backwards it, though. Oh, uh, you can hit uh, mirror uh, on the. Uh, there's a thing in there. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I don't know. If I... Oops. Yeah, turn it down, Jeff. What? Let's see your background again. Fiverr. Uh... Did... If it's a, the logo, Rob, I... Rob, is, it looks backwards to you, but not to everyone else. Is it, play it. But put it in up and let's see it again. No, yeah, it's just fine. It's, no, fine. it's, it's fine. fine. Yeah. It's not yeah. backwards? No. No, not but backwards. it is. Because this happened to me one time. I was doing a 50-person Zoom, and <clears throat> to me, the background looked backwards. Yeah. But to everybody else, it looked perfect. Yeah. When you blew out your smoke, you disappeared, and then you reappeared. That was pretty Really? Cool. Yeah, do that again. Let's see here. <laughs> and a cloud of smoke. Yeah. 
That's yeah, but you can't really see it, so I'll turn it off. <laughs> we used to smoke the Hemingways, the short stories, when we used to go to the club, because you could puff that one down before you got to go back into the club. Yeah. So anyway, so hey, Marjorie, if you're still awake and you're not asleep and you got, you're chatting, you can always join the uh, the Zoom. You know, Zoom uh, call. <laughs> she hasn't been on this show forever. You know, so yeah, it's been a long time. And, and and she has no excuse because she's been home all the time. Okay, she could do it. You yeah, know, but, Alex, did yeah. Uh, Marjorie subscribe? You know, that's one more you can get. Well, yeah, Marjorie, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Will you, everybody go over there. Let's see how we're doing now. 1,019 still. Now, see? See? Now, how many people have we got watching us? Well, see, they probably all subscribe. All right? So they probably already well, subscribed. Already. Yeah, we got 35 people watching at one time here. Uh, you know why you lost people? It was the Zoom bombers. You, you didn't. You didn't let them on, and okay. uh, they pulled off. The now, who do you think Hubble Plank Jr. is going to be? I bet it's John. John Larkin. I, I bet it's John Larkin. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's got to be John Larkin. John, you've got to somehow use the same name over and over again because I'm trying to keep <laughs> Zoom bombers off. But you use, use Maria Gonzalez next time. You're not going to get yeah, on. Yeah, don't put Maria Gonzalez there because yeah, yeah. No. What? There isn't a. There isn't a, 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 a. I would call it in Spanish, maybe or Latino name that's ever going to get on Gabnet again. <laughs> Thank, uh, yeah. Well, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? It would, but that seems to be the mo for the bombers. <laughs> yeah. You know. And, and um, you're wearing the wrong hat again. Yeah, Tony Gonzalez. He's wearing the right hat. That's the right hat. What? Yeah. This one? I wanted to find. I have a. I played baseball at Yankee Stadium once, mm -hmm. and I've got pictures of me in in the outfield, yeah. looking back at the stadium. And I I'm trying to find one of those pictures. I'd love to put it behind me and, and be at Yankee Stadium. Somewhere. Old, Somewhere. Old Yankee I, Stadium. Yeah. The uh, the one that uh, shut down. Yeah. Somewhere. I don't think it's here. When I moved, it, uh, I played there that yeah. summer, and then I moved later in the summer, and they shut it down the following year. I don't think it's here, but I have a Giants uh, jacket that's given to me by the Giants, or as I like to call them, the Gigantes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, so uh, anyway, uh, it's uh, so and my eyes are terrible, and uh, people are Zoom bombing me. But we're Zoom bomb free, but I have to look down here every now and then on participants to make sure that somebody I know isn't trying to get in. If you go there, you might have to wait a little bit. Uh, what 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 are you holding up there, Brian? I don't think you can see that. I can't hear. We can't hear you, for some reason. Well, You're not hearing. Why We're can't hearing we hear you? you? Really? Yeah, now, now we, we can do. hear you, but when you held the picture well, up, we couldn't hear. Up the mic. Oh, maybe. So so the the picture on this side. Yeah. That's in the seventies. That's my grandfather taking me to the Giants games. Yeah. And then be, before he passed away. I was taking him to the Giants games, so this cool. is him. And oh, that's very nice. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, he played some semi-pro ball. Yeah, he was a pretty good baseball and a golfer. Really good. Well, I I used to know uh, I used to know Wally Haas, who owned the team, uh, and owned Levi's too, and uh, he used to he said, "Oh, you got to come out to a game. You got to come out to a game. Come on, come on out to a game," you know. I'll copy the seats, you know. And so I say to my girlfriend, hey, you know, Wally Haas invite us, invite us out to a, a Giants game. And so we go there. And uh, 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 I walk in, I show them my tickets, and the guy says, follow me. And I start climbing steps up to the very, very top of the stadium. My back is against the top wall. Wow. My girlfriend looks at me and goes, friend of Wally Haas's, huh? <laughs> so anyway, comes Monday, or maybe it was the next day, I go on the air. Excuse me, folks, if I'm doing my, my, my Louis Armstrong here. Uh, and I um, go on the air and I go, I tell the story I just told. And I said, what's that? You know, 
I mean, I don't mind not being given the best seats in the house, but I do mind being given the worst seats in the house and sitting next to some guys flying the night mail to St. Louis. You know, I mean, that's how far back we were. Next thing I know, I get a call from Wally. Come see us again. This time I'll make it worth your while. So the next time I called him, and he said, okay, we got seats for you. Come on over. I bring my girlfriend with me. They're right over the dugout. Right? There you go. They're his seats. <laughs> okay. And so um, she was really happy. But she got really sad fast because she brought a baseball mitt. I don't know. I go out with these sporty women. I don't know why. She brought a baseball mitt just in case she could catch a ball. Right? And balls are going everywhere, but they're not coming in back of the dugout, which they probably wouldn't anyway, right? So, but so all the way home she went, I didn't get a ball, I didn't get a ball. So the next time I talked to Wall, I said, can you send us a ball, <laughs> you know, just so she has one? And he sent me a ball and I gave it to her. And I think she had a, he had a couple of people sign it and stuff. Yeah, so that's my baseball story. When the ball yeah. went over the fence, did you yell touchdown? Did you know it was a home run? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I didn't know where the 40-yard line was. I couldn't figure that out. I remember live on the five, whenever the Super Bowl came around, you said you were going to the mall. You said, Super Bowl's here. I'm going to the mall because all the women are going there. Well, yeah, I, you, you know, I'm, well, they asked me on the, they interviewed me for the Today Show, and they said, well, here, you're the one person. This was when it was at Stanford, the, uh, the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And said, yeah, I understand you're the guy who's not going to the Super Bowl. What are you going to be doing? I said, out hitting on all the guys' wives who aren't going to the Super Bowl. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the other story I tell is that, oh, wait a minute, here comes Jason. Hold on a second. I always have to make sure I keep looking over here. That's the only problem. Maybe I could just open up the waiting room, and then if we start getting... Zoom bombers, I can just get rid of them pretty fast. But I think I told you the time that I was, they asked me to throw out the first pitch at an A's game. And I'll t I gotta tell you something, you know, right? Rob, what are you going? Are we going what? Yeah, it's just really weird because um, I get a picture that's right side up and when I try it, it doesn't look right side up. I wonder why that is. I have no idea. It's the great gods of whatever, anyway. Uh, uh, but I, uh, you know, they, they wanted me to uh, throw out the first pitch, and so uh, and, and they put me on the, on the pitcher's mound, and you have no idea how far home plate is from that pitcher's plate. Am I right, Charlie? Because you're the baseball guy. Yeah. I mean, you think, you watch it on television because it's all kind of parallax, right? Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you, you just assume it's closer than it really is. 60 feet, 6 inches. That is they the want to move it now. They want to move it back. For, yeah. for a guy who doesn't even <clears throat> pitch, that's, you know, you're going to throw your arm out just trying to get a ball that far. So I take the ball and I lob it, and I hit the umpire right in his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> but I, at least I got it to, first, I got it to home. Okay, so I, yeah. I figured that's it. That's my baseball career. Goodbye. See you later. So did you get two balls in one pitch? <laughs> three, three balls. Yeah, three balls in one pitch. <laughs> yeah. So, a lot of people here have gone to see the Giants yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah. I think I can remember being a kid and going to see the Giants. Oh, of course. In New York. Because they were a New York team. Yeah. Do you know why the Giants went out to California? 57. 58 is when they came. But do you know why they went out to California? Yeah, the Dodgers. Dodgers. The Dodgers paid for them to go out to California. Yeah. Right. Because they, they, didn't want to, they, they, they didn't want to be the only <clears throat> team on the West Coast. Yeah. So they Makes left sense. New York at the same time the Dodgers did. They went to San Francisco, and the Dodgers went to L.A. 1958. Up until that point, there was no baseball east of the Mississippi. <clears throat> Yeah, they had yeah. the semi-pro leagues, so they had the Oakland Oaks. San Francisco and, uh, Seals. Yep. Yeah, you my know. grandfather played for the Oaks. Well, you know, 
it, mm. it, uh, as a kid growing up, I had no big thing about baseball. I always told Shecky that I was envious of him because he was a Queens, New York kid, and he grew up in New York, and he had uh, he had rooting rights for one of the major teams, whether it was uh, the uh, Dodgers, if you wanted to be with the bums, or 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 the Yankees. Or the, or, or the Giants. Or the Giants the Dodger, at that point. The Dodgers. And I said, I said, when you grew up, you grew up with that as part of your culture. I yep. said, when I grew up, we didn't have, we had the Seals. What were the Seals? You know, that's where is, jo- is Joe David DiMaggio. Wells played for them? Huh? And DiMaggio. DiMaggio I think David play- Wells yeah. and DiMaggio both. Played DiMaggio for played for the <clears throat> Dodgers. That's where they got him. Uh, the Seals, which I don't yeah. know. is it Was it a farm team for the Yankees? No. I don't think so. Good. It was just a, a independent. Uh, it was called the Pacific Coast League. Pacific Coast League, yeah. And then once they came, goodbye. You know, they they used to play yeah. at Kizar Stadium, and after that, you know, Kizar Stadium became a flea market. You know, because nobody had any need for it. They they oh come to San Francisco, we'll build you a stadium, and they built Candlestick Park. You know. No, but the uh, the Seals had a stadium. It was on. Uh, Petrero and 16th, or there's a Safeway there now. Well, no, no, but there were, there were the Keys are. You know where Keys are Stadium is? Is it still there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, the well, Keys are was where the Seals played. No, nah, the Seals played at Seal Stadium. Really? And then, and then the the Giants played their first year in Seal Stadium too, which was right at uh, 16th and Petrero. Okay. Now by, I, uh, by the Hams uh, Brewery. Hold on a second. I'm going to. Oh no, he hung up. Okay. All right. Somebody was trying to get in named Jucan and oh, then yeah. disappear. What was near the old white front store uh, that was down down there? It became a hardware store at one time and then a car dealership. What? Uh, was, that, was that a stadium? No, that, I, I think that was um, that was what, what was there after they tore down Seal Stadium. It was a White House. Yeah. Yeah. Then it was okay. a car dealership. Now it's a yeah. Safeway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, but um, um, so when you grew up in San Francisco, baseball wasn't really a factor, you know. I mean, yeah. some kids did pay attention to the Yankees and teams like that. You know, they had a team on the East Coast, but we were pretty well left out of baseball. So when the Yankees went to, uh, when the Giants went to San Francisco and the Dodgers went to L.A., all of a sudden there was now all the teams were coming to the West Coast to play. And then you opened up, Arizona got a team, and, they, you know, there were teams all over the place uh, that were on this side of the Mississippi. So uh, that's my history of, of, of that, and I'm sticking to it. How you doing, Jason? Doing pretty good. Looks like you've been out in the sun. Yeah, being Mexican, working out in the sun, gives you a little tan. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you get over the fence and get here? Uh, <laughs> I think they got a tunnel now. They got a yeah. tunnel now. Yeah. Tunnel, hey, ladder, airplane. Yeah. That's not. That's not a little tan. That'll get your neck stepped on for nine minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Too soon, Phil. Too soon, Phil. Hmm. Speaking of which, our president is uh, trying to infect North South Dakota tonight. No. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, he's speaking uh, at an outdoor event, 7,500 people attending, although uh, the Indians <laughs> the Indians have blocked the they road. They aren't Indians. Yeah. What are they're, they? They're, they're engines. Red- they're engines, Phil. Oh, oh engines. they're engines. Okay, I, I just want to know if they're upset that we're occupying that part of North Dakota, Dakota what is it? The South Dakota. Monument, South Dakota. South Dakota. Uh, what do they call the monument uh, there with the Mount Rushmore? Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore that's it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, Alex, you're an occupier. You're occupying Manhattan uh, on, a, on Manhattan no, no, Island. We I bought it. That, we bought it. We bought no, it. No, fair no, and square. No. Sixteen bucks. Or was it twenty-four 16, bucks? Twenty-four bucks. You're all occupiers. <laughs> yeah, you're an occupier. <laughs> yeah, well, but. That land was granted back to them in, in the 1800s, <clears throat> and then when they d- discovered gold on it 10 years later, they Ted stole Royal it back did. from them. But then they went to court in the 80s or the late 70s, and they got a su- Supreme Court decision 
where they gave them a hundred million dollars for that land and the Indians said, no, there's the Lakotas. They said, no, we don't want the money. We want the land. And they've never touched that money. Now it's worth over a billion. Yeah. Uh, haven't you ever heard of Indian givers? <laughs> Phil, yeah, how racist uh, are you going to get tonight? American. Know, Speaking of such things, have you heard that uh, there's the new renewed uh, call for the Washington Redskins to change their name? Well, it's about oh, fucking good. time. And now, the, okay. and now FedEx, and because they... FedEx is the big sponsor for their their field. Yeah, um, they're putting a lot of pressure on it, and now the Cleveland Indians are getting pressure put on them to change the name of the the Indians. You know, the, why, the why would you? Indians should not change their name. They should just change their mascot to an actual Indian from India. Well, uh, <laughs> actually, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't racist. think think I if I were Native American, Phil. If I were a Native American, that I would be that bothered by the Cleveland Indians because I think it's more the mascot with the the that Indian. Yeah, they right took here. it off the cap years ago. They remember they used to have it on the cap, and they put the C <laughs> there now. But I think it's more that well, because well, Indian. What, 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 what about the Braves? Atlanta. and the Braves too with the chop. Is the chop? Hey, what yeah. about Notre Dame Ohio, with the Irish? Ohio has problems. <laughs> you got Cleveland where they not happy with him. Because he was, uh, he had something to do with uh, oppression, uh, and now you've got Columbus, Ohio, you know, which they don't want. Wait till they find out that the name of Ohio is racist, you know. Ohio is a native name. My question uh, and racist. Well, my question is, I, I, I saw you know, I've been showing, have been showing Mount Rushmore today because obviously. That's where the president is spreading contagion tonight. Um, and um, I looked at those four guys up there, and I'm going, well, I, I got some problems with Washington lately. Mm -hmm. uh, and they probably got some problems with Jefferson, right? Is that Jefferson? Is Jefferson the other one up there? Is yeah, it's Jefferson. Jefferson. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Rose I think they're having some problems with him. And uh, we're not too sure about Lincoln. I mean, what are we going to do? Uh -huh. Take a, take a chisel to that mountain, and you know, there's room for Trump's uh, bust up there. Did you notice mm -hmm. all the way to the right? He would love That's that. What he thinks he would yeah. love that. Yeah, he should have. Never heard of it. He, he, he should, should have. have it. It. What the fuck, fuck? Phil? 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 Let, let's let's end this debate now. What the hell has that guy even done for this country? <laughs> Trump. Let's see here. Washington, he put America uh, Washington, first. Washington yeah. uh, uh, was one of the creators of the country, as was Jefferson. Lincoln freed the slaves and uh, and did a lot of other things. Um, uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, had his uh, <laughs> things that he gave, like the National Parks is a good example of something that uh, Teddy Roosevelt gave to America. What the fuck has Trump given to America? Come on. COVID-19. COVID-19. That's what he a, gave America. He, he did make us number one again. Not, not only not did he one. make us number We're one, he's, he's protecting us and, and making us number one against people that for the last 60, 80 years, mm -hmm. we've been giving money and they've been spitting we're, on we're, us. No, but we're number one in infection. And I think, he, I think he's, he's uh, managed to do that. That was uh, a lot of the African nations, you know, they had their hands out. You know, we need money. We need money. These people were despots. And, uh, you know, we paid them and paid them and paid them. And, uh, you know, they, they said they hate us and they burn us in effigy. So now he gives the money to his friends. Uh, I'm happy with that. Oh. <laughs> hey, Phil, do you drink coffee? Yeah. yeah. Looking, <laughs> looking, looking back at you, Jason. Looking back at you. <laughs> hey. Oh, look at that. Uh, who asked me if I drank coffee, Jason? Yeah, oh, yes, Howard's got his hand up. Howard? Yeah, it was me. I was just oh. wondering because a lot of it comes from Africa. Uh, not the stuff I drink. Oh, so you like do? The Italian and the, and the French roast. But it was genius, though. Did you see what the protesters were doing? The protesters took these vans and they blocked off the, the road and they mm -hmm. took the wheel off. They took the wheel off and they they kept the jack there and they took the rod from the jack, so they had to get, they had to get tow trucks the the flatbeds and they had to skid it on the on the brakes, on the calipers up up the thing. So they're there for a while. It's pretty funny. Yes, yeah. uh, yes, John. 
Yeah, the, I looked at that crowd. There's there's maybe a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred people at that thing. There's no seventy five hundred people. I so, looked at I I mean they're showing the crowd on So TV. basically he's getting a bad right. showing again. Yeah. Well, I you know, they look pretty full. they're blocking they're blocking the part of the uh, the people that are attending. You know, the Indians are, are blocking them. They aren't uh, Indians, uh, folks. Indian, Phil, Indian, Phil, Indian, let, no. please. Can Native I, Americans. Native Americans. Oh, come on. You trying to erase history? No, I'm trying to make you at least respect it. I'm trying to make people understand that, won't that when Columbus landed, and he didn't really land in India. He landed in America. Actually, he didn't even land in the United States. He landed, he landed in, in, uh, the in, 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 the in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, yeah. Oh, that's close enough. North America. First time he landed in the Caribbean, he thought he had discovered the New World. He went back and suddenly realized maybe there was more there. And he came back, and I think he hit the main shores of, of the United States, what is now the No, United he States. never he never landed in North America. He never uh, did? I don't think he ever stepped foot. I think North he America. did. I think on his second voyage, or third, there was set. You know was where, a, uh, what part of the U.S. Uh, or, or of uh, the Americas that he would have? Uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, Queens. I think he went to Queens. Queens? Went to Queens. Yeah. Went to Queens. <laughs> Stopped off at the uh, the ice house there in Corona. Yeah, he yeah. wanted to get some I, the Corona. I, the uh, ice king of Corona. Yeah. That's the movie coming to America, right? Going to Queens. Get his queen. Yeah. 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 So, anyway. Excuse me, everybody. I'm, I'm washing my eyes because they've been tearing all night and if i have a wet cloth and i do this it doesn't make them get have you got an air filter yet no it's too cheap why don't you get an air filter and put because it in you you don't understand you don't understand my electrical problem here okay if i plug I'm, in one of those things along with an air conditioner going i'm going to blow every fuse in I this don't building think an air filter I, really takes they don't much. use a lot of oh, yes, electricity it does. yeah it does they, they take a lot yeah yeah they do get one that doesn't <laughs> you can't get one that doesn't one that doesn't doesn't work well they just do smaller and, areas. and, and how do i know an air filter is what i need i make about buy spend 500 bucks for an air filter and then it you doesn't even work buy it at costco Earth. you could always yeah. return it costco yeah. i think has one that costs like 150 bucks and i've heard you really good just return it either. really costco takes anything back yeah well uh, you know. It's like one of their own brands, at uh, some blue air or something. Kimberly Goofile's got COVID nineteen. Who? Kimberly Goofile. Gilfoyle. 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 Does that mean she gave it to Don Jr.? I don't know. Hope so. And Don Jr. gave it to possibly Donald. How long do you think it's going to be before Donald Trump gets COVID? He'll never get Monday. COVID. Too many, too many tests going on. Everybody comes in contact with him is tested. Yeah, He's constantly chemical. tested. Yeah, but have you actually you seen the it. accuracy rate within the first like three days when you're tested, when you actually have it? Yeah, blame Brian. Well, Brian, what is the accuracy of that? I mean, it, it, let's let's say you he, he has people around him and they get tested every two or three days. In those two or three days, could they come down with it anyway, even though they tested negative before? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think they would. Okay, so testing all the people around him doesn't necessarily testing do it. Testing is I mean, no protection. I mean, there's the accuracy of the test, too, and that's where a lot of people are having problems. Because a lot of these, yeah, fast, yeah. Tests, a lot of these fast tests are like 40 to 50% accurate. So right. they say that they're, and they give them a false positive or a false negative saying you're fine, go home. And then they do have it, and they test the next day or so, and then they get it. That's right. My 90-year-old mother had a false positive. They sent her to the hospital because of it. Wow. And then there's a lot of people, too, you know, you might be infected your first day or two and that you're not going to test positive. It's just it's not it's not there yet in your system. By the way, 1,021 now of people who have gone back and subscribed. You may, folks, if you're listening, you may want to go and try and see if you're still subscribed because somehow... I lost a whole ton of people, but go over to uh, Alex Bennett, go to YouTube, and then type in Alex Bennett, go to my channel, and subscribe to me right now. Let's see, you know, we've, so far we've gotten five people. Thanks. Forty-one people watching. What? Uh, yeah. Forty-one people watching. Well, well, I don't know. We we I have no idea what that is about. By the way, anyway, where were we? 
Oh, so, um, um, but I, uh, uh, South Dakota. you know, I mean, I'm glad to see the Native Americans are protesting. They're blocking the roads there. That's great, you know? Um, I think that uh, they're doing, a, they're, they're worried about it, see? They're worried, what they're worried about with the Mount Rushmore thing is, is that they they've been very good at keeping COVID away, yep, in the tribe. What they're worried about is this game has already been played on them before. Exactly, where we sold them blankets with smallpox on them. Uh, but you know, I mean, uh, they 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 have a very definite uh, uh, horse in the game, or whatever you, the term is, uh, because they're they're worried about getting it. They're worried about their tribe being uh, stuck with it because of this whole. Well, anyway, that's why they're protesting, and it's a very. I would feel that way. I I live in a community. We have very little here, and if somebody decided to hold a rally here like that, I would be pissed. Well, I'm worried because our our number went up, not significantly. Something like sixty people tested positive, more, which is the most we've had in three weeks. Okay. Usually it's been around 850, 860, around in there. Today it was 910, all right? Uh, and it, quite frankly, uh, Cuomo's worried because he says this could be the beginning of something and we don't want to take that chance. And he's telling everybody, do your part, you know? But we're also worried about people coming in from out of state and, and doing this. We could get reinfected again. And uh, when you get infected in this city, you know, it spreads like wildfire. So we worked really hard to New get New York it City gets it again. Yeah. Oh, boy. You know, it's, well, it's not going to be Cuomo's fault. It's not going to be uh, my fault. It's going to be the fault of some people who really have no skin in the game. These kids, you know, go down and hang out on street corners drinking and thinking uh, they're immune to the whole thing, but they're not taking into consideration anybody else but themselves. Because they're and selfish. That's, you know, and that's one thing that's bad about the administration because they could be throwing out stats and you know, getting some of these people more scared than they are right now, you know, especially if you're getting younger ages. Well, it, let me talk to Charlie for a second. Charlie, you must yep. be at one point a little relieved and at another point just absolutely incensed by the fact that your governor, who a couple of weeks ago said, there's no problem, don't, don't, you don't have to wear a mask, is now making it mandatory for people in Texas to wear a mask. Yep, too late, though. Huh? Yeah? Where do you live? Uh, do you live in Austin? Is that where you live are? live in Austin. You yeah. live in Austin. That's a hot spot. Yeah. That's because, a hot because spot. Because Abbott wouldn't let Austin impose its own standards on the city. He may... He, he, he passed a law in the state legislature that, that took away the power of Austin to, to regulate its own city. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Jason, you don't even have to put your hand up. You can just talk whenever you want to. This is so, Zoom. Well, I don't want to interrupt. But, like, I wanted to get a mask and have printed on it. This is what patriotism looks like. Yeah. You know, because so many people on the right wing, they say they're, they're, they're patriots and they don't want to wear the masks. You know, this is what patriotism is. Bravado. Like. What, 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 what that, that patriotism is bravado. What amazed me was uh, this woman I saw on TV, I mentioned this last night, who went, well, it's my constitutional right not to wear a mask. <laughs> and I'm going, which amendment is that now to the Constitution, the right to wear masks um, or not wear masks? Um I there I the uh, am I right? Isn't the Bill of Rights the precursor to the Constitution? No, it came after the Constitution. Did it's it? The no, it, no. The Bill of Rights was forged uh, as a document against the. So that's case. why there are amendments. There, there's the Constitution, the original Constitution of Constitution Independence. Had no yeah, the, the Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments. Well, yeah. it, it, well, there is somewhere in the very beginning it goes. Mm. Well, the preamble. The preamble. Yeah, the, the government we, we make these rights to be self-evident that of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life the is the of life is the first one in there, and that we have that right. That's our basic right to life, liberty, and the pursuit. Because he 
made his. <laughs> That's what it looks uh, like. Yeah, perfuit of happiness. Um, uh, it, it is that that's the most important thing of all you know then comes your freedom to assemble freedom of speech and freedom to bear arm bears and things like that you bear know. arms bear arms uh, uh, bear yeah. arms okay bear arms that's what bear they arms. really meant bear arms yeah yeah uh <laughs> to bear you arms roll up yeah. your sleeves yeah. and have no, bear, bear arms. your arms yeah uh, but I mean, uh, I just don't see why that's not doesn't make um, a hell of a lot of sense to me that that we don't remember that life is the first guarantee that we have in there. You know, and that's the thing too is you know you're supposed to have any and every freedom until it affects somebody else. Somebody else, yeah. So when you you know there's a pandemic going on, you're supposed to stop yourself from infecting somebody else. You're supposed to wear a mask as a, a, how can we call it, respect to another human being. It's just respect. It's if you don't wear a mask, you're disrespecting people. That's it. They had a good, they had a good sign at this clothing store, you know, the one that you turn in old clothes and you get money back? Mm -hmm. And it says you cannot wear a mask. You have to wear a mask when you're in here. There's no, you know, no debating that. And it says... You can talk about how inefficient a mask is when you come back uh, and you're trying to sell your grandmother's clothes, your dead grandmother's clothes. Yeah. Well, you saying that, you know, you may not think a mask is good, but if you carry something back to your grandmother and she dies, you're going to be back there trying to sell her clothes to us. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is that, that um, uh, you know, it's, it's just a matter of people caring about people. And, and I, I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again. I mean, when, did, when was the Dow Jones more important than human life? Yeah. You know? I mean, when are we going to start having some values in this country? In, except yeah, the that's values the that kills me. Huh? The economy is man-made. Man can change the rules. Why not just sit there and say, no, you know, uh, 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 what am I looking for? You, you know, when you, you're... Uh, but, you owe money on something and it uh, appreciates whatever interest. No interest on loans. Loans just stop. No interest accumulate until this date. What did, what did I see that um, they they forego went and I don't know what it was. Uh, there was no paying of some certain taxes uh, till uh, next year because payroll. Uh, no, not payroll that. Tax. Something payroll else. taxes. No, it wasn't yeah, a payroll. Wanna, wanna, no, it wasn't a payroll tax. It was something else. Employee payroll, so that they get a full check without any deduction for uh, federal tax. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, it, it, we we we're in a, we're in a really that could be dangerous. Yeah, yeah. We're unless a, they cancel the tax altogether, because otherwise you're gonna have a huge tax bill in January. Uh, I don't know that it's uh, going to be retroactively charged. I thought it was a forgiveness. If it's that's forgiven, just, that's different. Right. I, I think it is. I, you know, uh, it hasn't been uh, signed into law yet. It's just something that Trump wants, and uh, I don't know that it's going to go through. So CEOs can hurry up and change their payroll to being paid by a payroll instead of being reimbursed by dividends and stocks and bonds. Yeah, uh, I think they get dividends. No, but what did I bonds. see? What did I see that they were? that you didn't have to do this year, that they were forgiving this year. And I'm, 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 it may have uh, the some... The PPP. Uh, I'm working on that right now. No, no, what no. What is that? No. The payroll it, protection plan. It's forgiven no, if you spent the money on rent, utilities, uh, in certain percentages, <clears throat> and payroll. And uh, they just extended it uh, to 12 weeks, and uh, 24 weeks instead of 8 weeks, so that whole 52 grand I got is going to be forgiven. I'm at I'm at forty grand right now, at eight weeks. So oh, I know uh, I what it was. I know what it was. I got a thing today from Prudential because I have a four hundred one k at Sirius XM, and every year because I don't uh, <coughs> because I don't uh, um, I, 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 what because you have to take the five percent or something. I had to take five percent or something, right? And so they sent me a check for like a grand or something. Every and they said, this year we don't have to take it. This year we can keep the money in there because uh, that's been forgiven this year. That's what I remember as being forgiven. So, a little, a little, little 
money to stay there rather than be pulled out. But Alex Bennett's heck? money talk. Now we can talk about microphones. No. They're showing all the. They said the the rents of San Francisco have gone down. I think the average was like thirty six hundred a month, and now it's down to thirty three hundred. My I friend, I have a friend that I poverty owns, levels now. I've I've had a friend that I've known thirty thirty five years owns a lot of real estate in San Francisco, and he says he's got so many empty apartments yeah. that you know he's been living in Palm Desert. He came back here. He's living in one of his empties, just trying to get all the apartments rented out he's got people that weren't paying the rent uh you know he he's crying the blues but uh Is, isn't this whole thing about maybe he should have planned better isn't this whole thing about not being able what, to COVID? Not being, yeah, that's what i hear from the right wing all the time maybe you should have planned better not yeah. being able to um not being able to uh, now i forgot what i was going to say because i started uh, it was Sorry, because reason. you forgot most yeah. of my left wing friends haven't I actually suffered through this at all because they actually have planned good. So it seems like the right wingers are actually getting called out right now because they fucking don't plan very well. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is that, uh, that, you know, um, uh, th th there's going to be a lot of, a lot of people who are going to find that, you know, that th this month is going to be a problem for them because I believe July 1st, the ability to not evict somebody is over with. That was like a three month deal. Three month, yep. yep. And they're going to start evicting people. And that's going to be really pretty, you know? But I mean, they're kind of stupid. That's going to be a really ugly thing. It's going to be so tough to, to evict people during this time. Well, the thing it's is, not gonna look good. what do you do? You evict people because they can't afford to pay you. So then you have an empty apartment you're not making money on anyway because nobody can afford to take it on. So you're right. there with an empty piece of, of real estate. It's better that you they, they, it's way. better just to, to to let people stay there and then after it's all over say okay your rent's starting up again. You don't even owe us the past rent. Uh, you know, you know who's really getting hurt in all of this <laughs> the commercial real estate because businesses are closing, you know, Howard's in the real estate business. And, uh, you know, I'm, are you suffering uh, commercial losses as well, as well as, you yeah, know, commercial rental real estate's down, vacation rental is down. The only thing surprisingly is residential is still moving. There are people who still want to move here. I mean, I saw a house come on the market and it was already under contract in three days. It's just the, the mortgage rates are attractive. So they dropped again now. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be nice when they pay us to take it. <laughs> yeah, that's where it's going. Yeah, well, I mean, a three percent interest rate. When was that? Yeah. When in your lifetime did you get three percent? I got two point six two five. Well, yeah. Howard, on a, on a on a fifteen or a thirty? Fifteen. Hey, Howard, nice. if you if the residence in Maui isn't your prime residence, can you still get a three percent uh, loan? Yeah. Yeah, even if it's not your where you live second home second home yeah yeah but anyway what i'm saying is is that it's going to get very ugly in the next in this next month as we see people get their eviction notices uh, but see like i said you could change the economy it's all man-made why couldn't they just sit there and say no rents do well you know you something know, you know something when, when, are, when are we going to admit that the kind of capitalism we've been engaging in uh, has suddenly turned around to bite us in the ass. That in a, in a situation like this, we don't have the ability to weather the storm because we're so wedded to to capitalism that, as I said earlier, when is um, uh, human life have less value than the Dow Jones average? You know, and and. I think it's time that we started changing the way we do business in this country. Yeah, you want to have private business? Go ahead. Entrepreneurship, all of that. But the fact of the matter is that when something like this happens, we have to say, okay, all bets are off. People can't afford to rent, so nobody can evict anybody for the next year because this thing isn't going to be over for a year. But right? it, it, that's that's you have to think about it in a total – you can't just look at it myopically like that because those people have bills to pay. Someone's paying the bills somewhere. Right? Yeah, but you, you, you could say, all right, nobody pays rent, but 
he's still that. So nobody pays rent and nobody has any bills you, to you pay because somebody's I'll, paying something. I'll, I'll, I'll feel sorry for somebody. I'll be. I'll feel sorry for one of these landlords when they can prove to me that they're truly losing I have, money. I have, so I have friends who are landlords and they are not rich. Okay. These are people that have properties. They right. they they rent them out for uh you know it's it's for the future right. They're growing. They, they bought the properties. They rent them. They're paying the mortgages on those properties with those rents. So if you tell people to forgive it, you have you, you just can't forgive well, it. Well, I understand that. Well, so it's coming from somewhere. I mean, it, uh, the government get, wants to have everybody's houses. Jason's and got property his, taxes. Jason, Jason's yeah. got his hand up. But, but see, that, that's where I was saying the economy is man-made. So I was a landlord just like a year or two ago before I sold my rental property. And if this happened back then, and it was, we were freezing the economy, so therefore I owed a mortgage payment on the house, and that was being paid by my renter. You know, now my renter doesn't have to pay, and I don't have to pay the mortgage, and there's no accumulating interest on that. It, it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't affect anybody. You know, Somebody's you could, you paying could, it. It has to be. But no, no. It's it's short term. You can, you can, short you can term. pause Well, I, the by, by, by virtue of being married to Marjorie, I am a renter myself. You know, we rent a property mm -hmm. out. And I think during this situation, she has either pulled back on the amount of money they owe her or whatever. But she felt that, you know, she had to do that, you know. And, and um, but I'm talking about the, 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 the big people like, the guys who own this building, they own 30, 40 other properties in New York, maybe more. Uh, they've got money. They're not going to lose money. They've got the property. The, this building itself is worth how many millions of dollars? Okay? So the, it's, it's not, not worth like, that money, though, if people can't. It, the reason it's worth that money is because people, because it's, because of the rents you can charge. As if I'm it wasn't saying, worth that, let me what happens to the value of let it? Me put when it this you have way. that many properties, you, you have things called REITs. People invest in those right. so that they can get a return uh, and be able to live in retirement. Uh, so if if their properties, they may have 40, 50 properties, they got investors. Those people are depending these, on these the guys. Income. These guys who own this apartment house don't have a single investor. They don't have a, they don't have a single investor, Phil. Yeah, how can you know? They're on, they're, they run out of an office oh, in Brooklyn, and they're, they're, they're a company that is just a sole company that over the years has bought up cheap properties. And as time has gone on, they become worth more and more. They haven't done anything to improve them. They've been, well, slum, they've been slumlords basically for all these years. And they bought this property. They brought this building for $135,000, okay? Wow. Plus, wow. The funny, the plus funny having to pay... Too having to pay the back taxes of 150000 For under $300,000, they bought this entire building, which is now worth, I would say, in excess of several hundred million dollars. The funny if thing nobody, is, if during, everybody, this, during this whole entire pandemic, they were never considered essential workers. <laughs> what are you saying, Phil? I mean, uh, uh, Rob? I was going to say, though, it, so they, that's the idea of having an investment. If you just forgive everything, then what is it worth? What do you do to the economy? What is it actually worth? Well, and then you, you if see, you're going to do that, here's the other thing. If you're going to do that, and again, I, that's where I draw the line with being, I'm liberal more on the social side and less on the financial side because that's what we're built on. Why would anybody invest their money in anything if it wasn't to make money? Well, you, you, just, see, you put a pause on it, just like in, in uh, 1999, you know, you, they had to have all these computer code writers write their code for the y2k you know you just you have to rewrite the code and put a pause on they, it they and put then everything they, just restarts when the economy can reopen the, the economy the economy under nixon ford had a uh had a moratorium yeah, that, and what happened was it spurred inflation that you you had no idea it was like we were in venezuela uh, you know, interest in the banks were they were giving us 18, 19 percent just to have a savings account. Mm -hmm. uh, so by doing those artificial holds, it is proven in, in, in past performance that it will create a the much Republicans did that. Rewrite the code. Yeah. Rewrite the code. It's I, just I read a computer a, program. Rewrite now? the code. 
What? What would you say, Charlie? Like that? What, Charlie? So isn't that why we have the Fed now? So they can step in and do things to avoid inflation like that? But the uh, Fed isn't really part of the government, is it? Well, you see, it was called price controls. You know, that, I, that, yeah. you know I, I think there should be a lot of forget, like the landlord should be forgiven certain things that they're going to mm -hmm. owe the government in this particular situation. But I just don't think anybody should be evicted right now. And I think that once this is over and we go back to making people pay rent, that they are not retroactively going to have to go back and pay for the rent they didn't pay during this period of time. You know, one of the other problems with because that then is they'll, people, then they'll get evicted. People know? get accustomed to not paying rent, and then when it's time to pay again, they don't want to pay. Well, that's always <laughs> supply and demand, though, right? It's supply and demand. You you can pay a thousand dollars a month because of all the things that are going on, but when when people are willing to pay 2000 a month for that apartment again, then, I mean, that's supply and demand. Well, you know, what I happened mean, in San Francisco. It happened in New York. Every area that gets gentrified, right? You know, the, the prop, people who have problems paying rent right now are, are having problems through no fault of their own. You that's know, right. they did not cause this situation. No, to they happen. didn't. No. And they need the relief that, uh, that uh, the government could give them by passing laws and saying, you know, we're – you know, you don't owe anything until this is this is passed. You know, the one thing that Trump has said that is true, but it's naive, but it's true, is that someday this will all be behind us. Of course, it'll be behind yeah, us in one way or another. Everybody will be dead or something like that, but it will be behind us. We will come up with a vaccine, for instance, and then it will, this, at least this pandemic, will be behind us. But yeah. until then... We've got to do something about it, and we've got to take care of each other. I mean, every year you pay taxes. Every year Americans pay taxes. What are they paying for? They're paying. Hey, uh, Alex. They're paying. I, I really they're agree. paying for this, and and they should, in times like this, be taken care of. Yep. Hey, Alex. I read a great uh, uh, headline. It says protesters criticized for looting businesses without forming a private equity firm first. <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean all i'm saying is uh you know a lot of a lot of these americans who are now facing eviction or will face eviction july, as of july 1st are people who paid their taxes every time a paycheck came in and and paid their taxes at the end of the year and you know, all of that and through no fault of their own now they find themselves in these circumstances because they were a contributing factor to the government and to the taxes and so on, this should be their, their, the, the, the thing we do back for them, okay, to say your tax money was worth it. Yes, Jeff? A lot of people have forgotten about 9-11, where particularly in the New York area, a lot of businesses were absolutely stopped. Yeah. And, and nobody wanted to buy anything. They didn't want to try anything. They were they were terrified. Yeah. That the, that the whole place was going to blow up. Uh, and one of our our uh, I had this company, small company, but the people who we rented the the facility, and the lady who ran it calls me up and she goes, I understand. You're out of business right now. And I says, well, effectively, you're right. And yeah. she says, well, I'm not going to charge you the rent for like three months or so yeah. until we see what happens. Yeah. And that was terrific. That was absolutely kept everybody did she, uh, there. Did she, did she ask for back rent when everything came back? Or did nope. you, were you just excuse? You excuse those three months? Excused. Nicest right. thing I had a I had a landlord do I was living when I was living down on Houston Street, I can't remember what it was but I think it was during a time when the the economy went south, okay, mm -hmm. and um, they forgave us rent for I think three months something like that, saying we know you can't pay it. Oh no, I know what it was. It was time for my rent to come due for renewal. And they said, we're renewing you for another two years at the same rate because we see the economy has not been good and you shouldn't have to pay more. 
that was very nice. I never saw a landlord do that voluntarily, especially in New York, the home yeah. of, of slum lords. Mm. When uh, when Proposition Thirteen came on, what was that in seventy seven eight, uh, which was a, a California proposition to freeze. Uh, the uh, ta- uh, property, property taxes. property taxes. I have a, f- I had a friend, uh, he passed away, but he owned a building on Union Street, and he had four units in there. Mm-hmm. He actually got in um, uh, Herb Kane's column because he was the only landlord that reduced everyone's rent by the savings that he got on the property taxes. And Herb Kane put him in his column, you know. Yeah. And, uh, very, Herb Cain was a uh, uh, columnist in uh, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Examiner. No, uh, well, for, he used to be the Chronicle, and then he went to the... Did he, did he wind up at the Examiner? Yeah. Uh, he, wasn't he Daily? So if he was Daily, he was Chronicle. If it was the afternoon paper was the That's Examiner on Sunday. I don't know. He he started one place and went to another. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, he could make or break you. This guy, you know... Uh, had he ever written about you or was he dead mm-hmm. by the time you were here no he wrote about me yeah, yeah. dot 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 yeah. dot dot yeah, triple dot yeah um, um well what he said was is that i was dating deborah winger <laughs> so i came back to san francisco after being on vacation they go what's with you and deborah winger it turned out we were at the airport together and we were both protesting what was bad service and and uh, somebody saw us together, and they assumed we were dating. Okay, so he had it wrong. She could have done better, huh? Oh, she <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so uh, you know, I mean, I just I just think that we have to we we have to look at this thing and say, look, the way we're going to solve this problem is by grabbing it by the horns, you know. Keeping businesses open is not going to save us. Keeping them open is going to mean you're going to have to close them down again, and the whole economy is going to tank once more. You know, I mean, Cuomo pointed out, very rightly so, that every time the COVID incidents go up, the stock market comes down. When this COVID goes down, the stock market goes up. What does that say to you? By taking the bull by the horns and solving the problem now, you're also down the line going to save the economy. And that we're not doing that. And Trump, who is the worst businessman in the world, I mean, the art of the deal, he didn't even write it, okay? Yeah. Uh, the art of the deal, I mean, what is this his idea, the art of a deal? I mean, it's terrible. It's terrible what's going on. You know, and... Uh, um, um, but he won't be president much longer. I, uh, but let me ask you this, everybody. Um, how do you feel um, uh, that uh, 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 Biden is doing right now in his handling of his, uh, and I'm not asking you, Phil, because we know what you're going to say. Biden, well, how do you feel he's handling his, uh, his candidacy so far? Anybody? He just needs to keep his mouth shut. I, well, he's doing a great job. Huh? Yeah. I think he's doing a fine job, and I think you're right. He's got to keep his mouth shut. Under it, the circumstances, what are you going to do, you know? Just go out and start spreading the fucking virus? No. That's stupid. But And and he's been putting his little input in and the right spots at the right times, I think, too, when Trump's been really quiet about stuff. And you know who's going to help lose the election for Trump? The Lincoln Project. Yeah. <laughs> the Lincoln Project has really gained momentum. Everybody every day waits for the next ad from the Lincoln Project. Yeah, t- Trump's laying the groundwork, though, for, um, for uh, to remain in power even if he loses. Because he's, what he's, what he's going to do, let's say he loses and it's really close, he's going to declare an emergency. And, you know, he has presidential emergency powers. That's going to send the thing to the, uh, you know, the Justice Department. Barr is going to investigate it for like two months. Uh-huh. Then December 15th, that's when the delegates have to be appointed. Mm-hmm. And uh, John, that's a waste of breath. No, no. And then the Supreme Court will, uh, the Supreme Court will throw it to the House, and the House will make the decision. They'll vote. 
and so you think, oh, well, then Biden will win because the House is more Democrats. But that's not how it works. It, each each state gets its own vote yeah. determined uh, to you know how you know if they have the majority of um, representatives. So that means there's 26 Republican states and 24 uh, Democrat states, and Trump would win. Hmm. Well, I mean, you know what I just noticed as I pushed a button wrong, and we've had our Gabnet logo up for a while. Let me put the Zoom panel back on. Oh, man. I didn't see that happen. Something went you wrong know, here. Biden is the new uh, model for the movie My Weekend with Bernie. Not funny. Um, Trump tweeted on January June 22nd, <laughs> rigged 2020 election. Millions of mail-in ballots will be printed by foreign countries and others. It will be the scandal of our times. That's laying the groundwork. Did you see oh, wait what wait happened wait, wait, wait. Can, New you, can you notice that somebody has had his hand up for a while? No. But look, Phil. Yes, yeah. go ahead. I, I so, couldn't see it. I, it's been, I think, since in my lifetime, I think it's been since George W. Bush. You know, it's always been, you know, this president is going to stay for a third term and they're going to, you know, I, I don't know that I really worry about Trump actually staying in the White House just because it's just been such a big thing. This president, you know, is Bush was going to do it first, then Obama was going to do it, now Trump's going to do it. You know, it's like we keep on putting up the same fear argument every single election. So Mark my words. Mark your words? Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I'm predicting Well, I, I, th <laughs> I think he's going to make it difficult for them to get him out of there. But I think they're going to get him out of there. You know. I hope so. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I think John's got this all on one wall in his basement with all the yarn and the string going to each different person. <laughs> Look at that. Taking notes. <laughs> See, there he is. I told you. Yeah. By the way, I want to apologize to the audience for the Gabnet logo coming up there for a while. But I pushed a, some button here, and then it got stuck. And then I pushed another button, and the next thing we had the Gabnet going. So just fix it in post. That it, could it, be. Nah, I don't have be to fix better it in post. than having us. The audio still went out. I mean, you know, yeah. it's just we didn't have the picture, which doesn't doesn't really matter. But what happened was my my little switcher here screwed up. It suddenly. And then I pushed a button to get it to go. Oh, I won't even explain it. Oh, stuff. it's all good. It's all it's only good. For, only for a couple minutes. Only for a minute. Well, you know. That's how long. But, you know, I just, I, I, I wish I could sit here and say that I'm, you know, things are going to be better. But they're not. They're not going to be till we get this idiot out of office. I'm sorry. This is. I don't even know that that's going to fix it, though. In the end, I think the the country is so polarized. It's going to whether it's, Trump's gone yeah. or not. I don't think. I, I we're just not. We're in a bad trajectory. Well, I'll tell you. The next thing it's got to stop. Win. The next thing it's got to well. stop. The next thing. Well, Phil, uh, you'll eat your words on that one, uh, mm. because he's doing a very bad job of winning. He's doing everything he, before he did everything he could do to lose, and he won. He's going doing everything he can do to lose now, and he's going to lose. I don't think so. Huh? No, well, I, I know you don't think so, Phil, but you're going to be wrong because no. because he he is just alienated too many people. You got to remember that a lot of people. The most common statement that I hear from people who voted for Trump was, "Well, I figured we've done it other ways. Let's give this give it a chance." Go with somebody who's not an insider. And now they go, no way I'm voting for Trump this I time. I know a lot of Trump people who voted for Trump who will not vote for him this time. Yeah. yeah. He's it lost. It matter in certain states. Your state, Virginia. Uh, he's Phil, no way he's he losing. He's losing Ohio right now by something uh, like a 10 I don't know anybody margin. who did not vote for him who is willing to vote for him now. Oh. I voted for him. And I'm willing to vote for him again. Okay, but but you, what you said is you didn't know anybody who didn't vote for him who would change up now. And I think that's true, Jason. But um, I don't think that the young people that they need to come out on the Democratic side are going to come out. They're, and they're, unfortunately, I think you're right there. But I think there's enough Americans who are not willing to vote for him to take that chance. Listen, again. I got I to gotta say good night to everybody. Howard. It's so nice of you to do your show from the beach tonight. 
Yep, thank you. Yeah, and uh, he's in Hawaii, by the way. Phil, thank you very much. Uh, cigar smoking uh, Rob. Uh, I can smell Scotch that. drinking. I can smell that stogie all the way over here. Brian, <laughs> another great week with you, Brian. Thank you, Charlie. Hope stay safe. Uh, Jeff, good to see you. And uh, John Larkin, good to see you around. And by the way, Jason, it was lovely to see your lovely wife. So, you know, that's good too <laughs> because she brought some beer. I'm just so chopped liver. You're just chopped liver, that's all. Anyway, everybody, uh, give a big wave goodbye and I will wave back at you. And uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, I don't know what happened earlier, but you know, I'm sorry if you didn't, uh, if you, all you heard was the audio and you saw the Gabnet logo. Uh, hey, listen, once again, a reminder, if you get a chance, go over to the, my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward, and then you put in Alex Bennett, it'll take you to the channel, and just subscribe to me, okay? And I want you to subscribe to me because somehow they dumped about 60,000 of my subscribers and I need to get them back, okay? All right. Anyway, uh, uh, we got uh, The Intersection next with Jack Bishop. I'll be back here again on Tuesday night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her and stay safe and wear a mask, okay? You don't have to be the Lone Ranger to do it. 